from here, y'all. I was a baby here. And I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why I love my church? Because God been so good here. God been so good. No, you look around, St. Paul. I'm sorry. You look around. And you see the people here. You don't know if they're going to be here tomorrow or not. You don't know that. We got to be thankful for who we see, who we who we have here now. We can't be worried about who's gone. Who's not here no more. Look around. Like Rev. Tell said, look around today. Tell them you love them. You may not get that chance again. Amen. 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 God's been good, y'all. Deep, don't give me this mic. Uh, all right, I guess we're going to turn to, to the uh, musician, right? Who we gonna turn it over to? Who we gonna turn it over to? Okay, here she comes. She's gonna come and introduce the mistress of ceremony. Let's say amen. Amen, she comes. First, giving praises and obedience to God, who's the head of my life, honor to Pastor Taylor and Executive Pastor Jasper Taylor, and to each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I stand before you to introduce the Lady of the Hour. I have known this lady all of my life. She is an usher on the Young Adult Usher Board and is on a JWA. She is a great wife, a great sister, a great daughter, and a great mother. I love this lady to pieces, and she can never be replaced. I present to some and introduce to others my mom, Kimberly Rochelle Lockett Turner. for that wonderful introduction. Amen. First, giving praise and obedience to God, who's the head of my life. Honor to Dr. Taylor and pa Executive Pastor Jasper in his absence, and to each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our present and our future. Today, as I stand before you, representing the present and the future of our St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, in April 1985, our current, our current senior pastor was elected to shepherd our flock. Under his visionary leadership, we continue to grow, and we have moved toward the biblical principle of giving through tithes, offerings, and sacrificial giving. He's implemented socially active ministries for jobs, housing, athletics, food, and clothing. As we follow our current pastor, we are dedicated to reaching the sinners, raising the saints, and releasing for service. Much can be said about our present day and the current state of the world. We have shared with, many, shared with you many historical facts this week when comparing the ages of the organization from 1990 to 2014. We've witnessed the election of the first African-American president of the United States. Amen. Cell phones, tablet computers, and GPS devices. The average price for a car is 31000 and the average price for a home is 289000 as we reflect on the past 95 years, the trend tells us that the best is yet to come. God has great things in store for us as a people. As we continue to follow our senior pastor and executive pastor, we're going to contribute to be a beacon light in our community, and we're going to continue to vote ourselves to raising the standard and growing this church through sound teaching, preaching from the Bible, and giving. Next, we'll have the entrance of the 2014 Anniversary Committee. Amen. Can everyone please stand?
I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. On the behalf of the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church family, we welcome you to the climax service of our 95th year anniversary. Whenever you come into the Lord's house, know that you're at home. And with that in mind, Vilkomen, Venvenutus, a key, and in English, welcome. for their wonderful welcome. If we can hit, get a response from a visitor. You don't all have to jump up at once. church drama ministry oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry I'm ahead of myself sorry now we have ministry and song by St. Paul Missionary Baptist Choir Amen.
I want to thank you. Oh, I want to thank you. I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you. Mama, help and dream. Thank you. 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 I have truly had a good time in the Lord. I will admit, I was a little reluctant to the thought of this whole church thing. But you know what? I really like it here at St. Paul. Me too. You know, I was trying to fix my own problems. And I was too busy trying to do my own self-observing uh, identity. But you know what? I realized if God ain't in the plan, there is no plan. You know, I see what my friend was talking about. She loves her church. It's one big happy family here. She talks about how the generation of the families make up the congregation mm -hmm. and all these different ministries. They got it going on. God is doing good things here. Yes, he is. And you know what? God has something in store for this church, something bigger and better. Yes, it does. I mean, this church has been around since 1919. Can you imagine that? That is a long time. Yeah. I know. Think about all they have witnessed. The Great Depression, the Great Recession, wars, the civil rights movements, and the birth of technology. When I think about the history of the church, it just gives me chills. Hmm. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. And I am so glad that you had touched, you were touched and witnessed what was going on these past few days. I've been asked often, why do I love my church? Well, Christ loved us first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Christ died on the cross for us. Mm -hmm. We are brothers and sisters serving a true and living God. We are not here. We don't have a watered down 
version uh-uh. Mm-mm. of the word. Huh. We have it straight with no chase. Right. Amen. 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 And here we are in the year 2014, where we have witnessed the first African American black president mm-hmm. be inducted into the White House. God has so much in store for us. Mm-hmm. Church. Mm-hmm. God has a plan for us. Yes, He does. But we gotta remain faithful, yes. steadfast, yes. and immovable. Yes. God gonna take us to higher heights. Yes, mm-hmm. He is. Young ladies, I'm so very thankful and blessed that you guys decided to join the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Me too. How many of you are out there love your church? Not a superficial love, but a real, real love. Mm-hmm. And of you, the use that raised your hand, how many of you are willing to take St. Paul to the next level? Mm-hmm. If you love your church, if you love your church, if you love your church, stand up and let's give God a praise. For 95 years, 95 years of service, call your neighbor, tell your neighbor that you love him, tell him that you love him, and that we are. Thank you. Hug your neighbors. The lady said hug your neighbors. Hug your neighbors. Hug your neighbors. And tell them that we are on our way to a greater, greater ministry. And great, great victory. Amen. 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 Remain standing all over the building. We're celebrating the victory that God has given us for the future. God has brought us faithfully 95 years, and he's going to take us even further. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, my church has the victory. Say, my church has the victory. Come on, put those hands together. Anybody know we serve a God who is big and mighty? And there's nothing that he cannot do. And today we claim the victory in Jesus Christ. We sing, my God is big, so strong and mighty. And his place for us. Goes beyond, goes beyond my wildest. Sing it again, my God. He is big. He's so good and mighty. And His plans for us goes beyond. So say this: There's nothing that my God cannot do. Anybody believe that today? He's brought us 95 years. He can take us further. Anybody know that there's nothing my God? There is nothing my God cannot do. So today as we celebrate 95 years, we're going to shout and claim the victory. I need somebody to shout back at me and say, we got the victory. Say it like you mean it. Say, we got the victory. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Man, I'm going to need your help. All the men in the church, can you just shout victory? Say, oh, yeah. Come on, encourage them, ladies. Say victory. Hallelujah. One more time. Can you shout victory? Yeah. Oh, victory. All right, help them out, ladies. Come on in. Say victory. One more time, say it. I got it. I One more time, can you just shout? I got it. I think. One more time, say it. Grab somebody about a hand and raise it high. Say victory, victory. I got it. I think that. One more time, shout victory. I got it. Let's switch it up. Say it. Say it. We got it. We got it. I thank God. We got it. One more time. Yeah. One last time.
There's nothing my God cannot do. Oh, my God cannot do. There is nothing my God cannot do. My God cannot do. There is nothing my God cannot do. Nothing my God cannot do. Tell me somebody and say, I love my church. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for encouraging me. And now I'll turn it over to the pulpit. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I didn't say praise Joel. I said praise the Lord, everybody. What, what a unique experience is for us to be able to celebrate another year in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and this body of Christ. Uh, let me thank the Turners today. Amen. Sister Kyra and her mother. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, we thank and praise God for our St. Paul Choir. Thank God for our, three, uh, our skit that lift up our theme, I love my church. Come on, come on, give Felicia and the cast. What, what a joy it is to be here today. Uh, I'm grateful to God for our speaker of the hour. Uh, he's no stranger to this congregation. Uh, he shared with us while he was on the west side with our friend and brother beloved Pastor Johnny Miller. Uh, he's an educated man. Um, he has his bachelor's from Olivet as well as his master's. And he is sharing with us. He's the pastor of the Greater Grace Church. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to bring Pastor uh, Rodney Griffin. And he'll direct his congregation. And he will share with us. As God has blessed him to share. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. We are so happy to be here on this afternoon to be in worship with the St. Paul Baptist Church. Uh, we salute you for 95 years of service. Uh, to both God and humanity. And we thank and we praise God for this privilege and this opportunity to share in this way. Um, we do a little something over at Greater Grace every Sunday morning. And I feel that, that I need to do it on over here at St. Paul, all right? I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the Praise his name and I Oh Lord I would Well I am on the battlefield for my Lord so glad I'm on Oh yeah I am on Christian band, I am 
the battlefield for my Lord. Well, now when I met my Savior, I met Him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit, and He owned me as His child. Around the throne of grace, He appoints my soul a place. I am on the battlefield for my Lord where I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me and the Bible in my hand. In distant lands I trod, crying sinner come to God. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I lost my flag in battle. I got the staff in my hand. I'm going to take it home to Jesus over in that promised land. I know the sun will shine on this old soul of mine. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, a glory, glory, a hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, my burdens down, glory. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Since I feel better, so much better, since I lay my burdens down, my burdens down, I feel better, oh Lord, so much better, yes I do say. Like a bird us down every round road higher and higher since I I laid all of my my bird us down every oh Lord higher and higher yes since I laid my a bird us. I woke up this morning with my mind. Oh Lord, I woke up this morning with my mind. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. West. It ain't no harm to keep your mind. Well, it ain't no harm to keep your mind. Lord, it ain't no harm to keep your mind. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, please feel free to use me. In the name of Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one, we do pray and we thank God. Amen. You may be seated. We give reverence to God, who is our Father, Jesus, who is our Savior, Holy Spirit, who is our Comforter, man, our brother to the angel and the overseer of this house, Dr. Taylor, and then to my brother, Executive Pastor Taylor, to First Lady Taylor, and to Executive First Lady Taylor, <laughs> amen, and to all of the deacons and officers. Uh, this the St. Paul Church, we greet you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. 
Uh, greater grace is in the house on this evening. Uh, we praise and we thank God for those that have come. Apparently our musician, it slipped his mind. But it's going to slip my mind to pay him. Ninety-five years. Because when we in church, we in church all day, right? All right. Uh, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 is where we want to look at. Thank God for Deacon Thomas uh, from Greater Grace being here. Mark chapter 2. Beginning with verse number one. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and there was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5 says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. I want to talk about when Jesus is in the house things happen. (laughs) When Jesus is in the house things happen. Uh, My sisters and my brothers we've come here on this fall afternoon to celebrate and share 95 years of God's grace and mercy. We've come here to pause, reminisce, reflect, recall, and remember how good the Lord has been to St. Paul Baptist Church. We come to celebrate the life and legacy of previous pastors. But then also to celebrate those that are currently in position. We come week after week with the purpose of lifting up the name of Jesus. St. Paul, St. Paul, you come this year to expound on how much you love your church. And as I was on Facebook, I noticed uh, First Lady Taylor would put up a couple reasons why she loved her church. Sunday school, she loved it. Culinary ministry, she loved it. But my sisters and brothers, we all have different reasons as to why you love your church. But I come this afternoon to tell you there ought to be one reason why we all should love the church. And that's because it's at the church that Jesus shows up. And I don't know about you this afternoon, but but I'm so happy that he still stops by to see about his church. Oh, yeah, because because you have many types of organizations open in the world today. But there is nothing like God's church. It's in God's church that you find the best. But then you can also find the worst. It's in God's church that you find a diversity of people and gifts. But at the end of the day, it's still God's church. And before I go any further in this message, let me poll the house real quick to ask, is there anybody else in here that loves the church? Because the Lord shows up. I know, I know, I know people, people are out talking about what's wrong with the church. What's bad about the church. But the church is still the best thing that we got to offer. I mean, because because our schools are shutting down. If the government can't get along, they'll take a break. 
But the church still stands open. Marriages are falling apart, but the church is still a pillar in the community. As I looked at this, I said, now you can invite a whole lot of folk to the church. You can invite family members and neighbors and relatives and associates. You can, you can invite, matter of fact, he's in the city today. I heard President Obama, you can invite him to the church. You can invite your aldermen and your senators, your house of representatives to the church, but, but you ain't had church until Jesus shows up. But the truth of the matter is, he comes and he changes things when he comes. And I believe it's about two or three folks in here that don't mind testifying that when you encounter Jesus, he changed your life. Because the truth is, you cannot come in contact with this man named Jesus and your life be the same. Or oh, somebody can testify that when you met Jesus, you don't cuss as much as you used to cuss. You don't fly off the handle as far as you used to fly off because the Lord has a tendency to take your life and change your life. Oh yeah, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for the church. Because the church is a group of baptized believers in Christ Jesus. That has the awesome task of demonstrating the characteristics of Christ. Uh, exhibiting the love of Christ, occupying the spirit of Christ, applying the truth of Christ, bearing the cross of Christ, embracing the word of Christ, and realizing the kingdom of Christ. We are the church. The church is the only institution in the world that depends on nothing or nobody but Christ. The church doesn't have to cut any deals to survive. It doesn't have to compromise uh, any ideas to, to exist. It doesn't have to sacrifice any principles to make it. We must thank God for the church. I mean, the church is so powerful to Jesus came on the scene and tells Peter in Matthew chapter 16, it's upon this rock that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What I love about this scripture is that it does not tell me that the gates of hell will form, but it says they won't prevail against the church. In other words, you, you, you got to learn how to embrace folk that's full of hell, but then still are welcome them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he already told me that his church will stay and the test of time. The church, the church, the church, the church is a very powerful institution. As we look at Mark chapter 2, we see that we're situated here in a synoptic gospel. This, this particular gospel uh, is known to be the first gospel that is written. Mark is written to the Romans, and he presents Jesus as being the suffering servant. Come on now. And you must understand that each gospel writer takes Jesus and presents him with a different viewpoint. Matthew presents Jesus to the Jews, and he presents him as being the king of kings. Then Luke writes to the Greeks, and he presents Jesus as being the great physician. John writes to the entire world, and he presents Jesus as being the word made flesh. That is dwelling among us. And as I looked at Mark chapter 2. I see. It says that and again. It opens up with these first two words saying that whatever is about to happen. Jesus is doing it one more time. It says and again he enters into Capernaum. And after some days it was noise that he was in the house. See, that's why I don't get with no quiet church. Because whenever Jesus is in the house, some noise ought to be, be made. When, when the Lord shows up on the scene, somebody ought to show some sign. No matter of fact, I heard the scripture say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But I've learned, I've learned, I've learned that the reason some people can't say nothing is because they ain't seen nothing. But when you see the Lord working in your life, you ought to say something. When you see the Lord making a way out of no way for you, you ought to say something. When you, when you see the Lord taking your too little money and giving you more than enough, you ought to say something. When you see the Lord healing your body, you ought to say something. Is, is there anybody else in St. Paul besides me that can tell about it? You have seen the Lord work time and time again. Well, if you have seen something, you ought to say something. 
It says, it says, it says, he enters into Capernaum and it was noise. It was a ruckus that he was in the house. Now some folks just making noise, but it ain't no joy for noise. Oh, you know some folks like that. As a matter of fact, it just might be you. Just making noise. But, but it said that, that, that when he was in the house, it was some noise around town. Jesus then stopped by one more time. And that's the reason I keep on coming to church week after week because he never fails to show up. I got some great members at Greater Grace, but sometimes some of them decide to take a break on me. But Jesus, he going to show up. See, I, I'm glad that I got a guarantee that the Lord is going to stop by and see about me. Is there anybody else in here can testify that the Lord has stopped by? He ain't got a way to stop by the church, but he'll come and see about you at your house. Because I found out that the best praise party I've ever had is the one that I have in the living room at my own house. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, Holly. See, I, I, I told you my musician ain't here, but I don't need no musician because the Lord been so good to me that I've learned how to praise him all by myself. And if y'all don't want to give me no amens, that's all right. I know how to amen myself. Preach, Rodney. I'm doing the best I can. You got to learn how to encourage yourself and tell the Lord thank you. It was noise that he was in the house. But, but I couldn't stop at verse number one. Because I was trying to figure out why was it so much noise? Because when Jesus shows up, he don't just show up. He does something when he show up. And so I began to wonder what is Jesus doing that is causing such a ruckus around town? Verse number two says, and straightway. Many were gathered together. And so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. I said, Mark, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Jesus, he ain't got no games. He ain't got no gimmicks. But the text says that it was so many people. That it was packed. And nobody else could get in. Because every place was filled. Oh my sisters and brothers. I wonder. About the church of 2014. We have this. Microwave mentality. We have this. Hit it and quit it mentality. We have this get in and get out mentality. But it said right here that, that there was no room to receive these people. And all he was doing was preaching the word. I said now, something got to be wrong. I know good preachers. I mean, and they churches ain't full. But I turn on TV every Sunday morning. Joel Osteen. Ain't saying nothing. Got a few good jokes. Gonna talk about him and Victoria. And then he gonna extend the invitation and ain't told you about the cross. And he got a, a super dome filled with folk. Jesus is preaching the word. Now, 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 when I looked at the text, when I looked at the text, I, I noticed, I noticed, I noticed that that uh, scripture says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be? Every preacher that's preaching. And the only way a church can last 95 years is that your preacher has had to be sent from the Lord. See, see, because, because you got two types out here. 
those that were sent and those that went. But, but when you look at the job of the preacher, it is the preacher and the gospel that he preaches that reforms lives. It is the gospel that consoles the disconsolate. It is the, the gospel that he preaches that binds up the brokenhearted. It is the gospel that he preaches that brings back prodigals. I mean, I mean good preaching. Anybody know what good preaching is? Yeah. I know y'all know what good preaching is. Y'all got two good preachers over here. It, it, more than two. More than two good preachers. Good preaching gives you a courage that won't run, a faith that won't doubt, a humility that won't strut, a love that won't lust, a conviction that won't compromise, an honest that won't lie, a stability that won't stagger, a, a confidence that won't destroy, an assurance that won't question, a responsibility that won't shirk, an integrity that won't forsake, a determination that won't quit, a reliability that won't waver, an honor that won't retreat. Is there anybody here, thank God, for good preaching? Good preaching gives you a dependability that won't disappoint, an obedience that won't carry a patient that won't give up a character that won't give in and a perseverance that won't give out good preaching gives you a nerve that won't fade a commitment that won't change a maturity that won't boast a dedication that won't bow a purpose that won't desert a boldness that won't falter and a generosity that will not come and thank God for good he preached the word unto them I see three things in the text the reason why I love the church yes, sir. Yes, sir. Number, one number one is that the church that preaching will be delivered. Uh -huh. yes. If you can't find nothing else at the church you ought to be able to find some preaching. Yes, Come on, man. Come on, man. You ought to be able to find some sound doctrine yes. right. at the church. Uh -huh. It says that Jesus is preaching the word unto them, but the text takes a turn when it says, and they come unto him, they come unto him. bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Uh -huh. There was a young man who found himself paralyzed, yeah. had a palsied condition. And what happened was he surrounded himself by the right people because they looked at him and said, we're tired of you being in this condition. And let me stick a pen right there and tell you that you got to be careful who you got in your corner. Because, see, you need some folks in your corner that when the Lord start blessing you, they don't get jealous of you, but they start shouting with you. I told Greater Grace this morning that, 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 that I ain't got time to be jealous over nobody else blessing because I know if he blessing my neighbor, he's in the neighborhood. And I know my house is next on the block. So whatever the Lord got for you, it is for you. And ain't nothing that the devil in hell can do with what God got for me. He surrounded himself with the right people and they said, we got to get you to Jesus. You ought to have some people in your life that will get you to the place of your breakthrough. You got to have some folks in your life that will, that will usher you and carry you to the place where the Lord has predestined you. Check this out. This, this is what I love about this. Because, because they didn't just talk about it. They took part in the man's mirror. It says. They went. And got him. And said Jesus. Is in that house. Preaching the word. They carried him. To Jesus. Oh be careful. Who you got carrying you. Because you might end up somewhere. That you really don't want to be. They carried him to the place where the man was that could help him get through what he was going through. Right. It says, it says, they brought him to Jesus. Yeah. But verse number four yeah. says, when they couldn't come in, yes, sir. because there was so many people yeah. 
around because the house was so full they couldn't come in so what they did was they didn't say up you missed your miracle they said you stay here we're going to make preparation and and I serve a God then when you can't see your way out he'll make a way I mean these fellas they put this man down and they climb up. Can't you see it? Another man's roof. I mean, they, they didn't own this place. They climbed up another man's roof, got on top, and started tearing up the roof. When, when, when you got the right folks in your life, they'll have a by any means necessary attitude so that you can get your miracle, your deliverance, and your breakthrough. They got up there and started tearing up. Not only will, not only will preaching uh, be delivered, but, but secondly, persistence will be developed. They were persistent about getting this man to Jesus. Then, then after they uncovered the roof, they went back down and had to carry the man to the top of the house. And then they lowered him down. They said, well, we can't get in through the door. We can't get in through the window. But there's still a roof that we can tear up. And all my sisters and my brothers, whatever it takes to get your miracle, you better get your miracle. If you can't get in through the door, if you can't get in through the window, you better get you on top of the roof. And start tearing up the roof and say, I got to get to Jesus. Because when you have a I got to get to Jesus attitude, you'll find yourself doing stuff that you wouldn't ordinarily do. When you get desperate enough, you'll find yourself saying stuff that you don't ordinarily say. Just like that woman with the 12 year long issue of blood. Found herself in a place uh, 12 long years with the same old condition, with the same old infirmity. And the Bible says that she began to talk to herself. Oh, and everybody that talked to themselves ain't crazy. What happened was she, she said to herself, Self, there's another doctor in town. But herself said back to her, Woman, we've been at this for 12 long years. She said, Self, I know we've been at this for 12 long years, but Self, I need to get to this doctor. Herself said back to her, Well, woman, we've been at this for 12 years. You ain't got no more money. You just spent everything that you have. And she said, Self, I don't need you to rewind and press play again about what I've been through, but I need you to get me to this man by the name of Jesus. Because if I can get to Jesus, I just believe that I can be made whole. Well, herself said back to her, Woman, I can't get you that standing up. She said back to herself, Self, you might not give me that standing up, but just give me that the best way you can. Because the Bible says she got down and began to crawl. Because of the press, she could not get to Jesus. So she crawled through the crowd. And check this out. Anytime you're trying to get to Jesus, somebody is going to try to stop you. And I just told you, everybody don't want to see you blessed. Everybody don't want to see you delivered. Everybody don't want to see you healed. But the woman had enough faith and courage that said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. She said, I ain't got to touch the H-I-M, but I just need to touch the H-E-M because whatever's in the H-I-M, it got to be in the H-E-M. If his power in the H-I-M, it's power in the H-E-M. If it's really in the H-I-M, it's really in the H-E-M. You might not be able to get to the H-I-M, but you better press and touch the H-E-M. Is there anybody? In the room this evening, they can testify that you pushed your way to Jesus sometime, and now you look back over your life and you wonder how you made it. And all you can say is, I touched the hem of his garment. I don't know about y'all, but I thank the Lord that I can touch him sometime. And then I found out that he don't just touch it. I can't just touch him, but he'll also touch. It says, now they, verse number four. After they broke it up, they lowered him down. In the front, in the face of Jesus, it says, verse number five, got me, because Jesus looks at not the man, but he looks at the friends, because it says right here when Jesus saw their faith. He says to the sick of the palsy, 
sons, thy sins be forgiven thee. First, I told you that preaching will be delivered. Secondly, I told you that persistence will be developed. But then, verse 5 tells me the power will be demonstrated. Because Jesus now looks at this man. And he looks at the friends. And said, if you all have this much faith. I ain't got no other choice. But to heal this man. I got to do something for him. And all my sisters and my brothers, you might not have it all the time, but you better surround yourself with somebody else. That in your time of despair, you can link up to them and they can pray you through your situation. You don't need somebody that's just going to sit on the phone and gossip with you. You need somebody that can intercede on your behalf. And when you can't pray for yourself, they, be, they better be able to pray for you. Because it's going to get rough sometime. The going is going to get tough sometime. But if I got somebody in my corner that can lift me up and get me to the face of Jesus, I know everything will be all right. I'm, I'm out of here now. But when I look at the text, I notice that when Jesus is on the scene, Things start happening. When Jesus is in the house, there ought to be some noise taking place. When Jesus is around, somebody ought to be able to proclaim that I know this man. And the Bible said that nobody could come in, but they found a way to get him down to Jesus. And I'm out of here this evening. Thank you so much. For allow me to celebrate 95 years with you. But I want to tell you tonight that when Jesus is in the house, things will start to happen. And I wish I could get about four or five folks that don't mind testifying that he stopped by your house and made some things happen. But if y'all don't mind, can I go ahead and make my exit? But when I think about how the Lord, he'll pick you up and turn you around and he'll place your feet on solid ground, I get so excited just knowing that he is in the house. And although it get rough sometime, I know if I can get to Jesus, my situation will be turned around. Is there anybody else in the room that serve a God that if he did it before, he'll do it again? Well, high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I really don't know what you're going through. And I don't know what you've been experiencing. But I want to let you know that Jesus, he's in the house. And all you got to do is turn your problems and give him your burdens. And he will turn things around. I'm out of here now. Thank you so much. But I got to testify this evening. I've been through some ups and downs. I've had some rocky times. But can I tell y'all, I met a man by the name of Jesus. And my life has never been the same. Good evening, St. Paul. Thank you for the grace. But can I leave you with this word of encouragement? Be not dismayed, whatever the time, God will, blessed God will, God will, take care of you, she needs his wings, another time, God will, anybody know he will, I said anybody know he will, if you know he will, let me hear say yeah. Say yeah, do me a favor and high five your neighbor and say neighbor, the road is rough and the going is tough, but he is maybe hard to climb, but I started out a long time ago and there's no doubt in my mind, I decided, oh shucks here, I decided to make Jesus make him my choice, I didn't mess around and get happy, because I so I'm thinking about how the Lord here do for you all. What's the case of yourself? Is there anybody in here know he's in the house? Is there know he's in the house? Let me hear a shout, yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! Oh yeah! I'm going to my seat, but I can't leave without sharing my testimony. I don't know what you know about.
about him, and I don't know what you feel about him, and I really don't know what you think about him, but one thing, I said one thing, one thing, I know that I need, I know he's all right. Is he all right? I said, is he all right? Don't fool me to see you. If you know he's all right, say yeah. If you know he's all right, say yeah. I know he's all right. There was a story told about an old man that would get drunk every day and he would go to the church and when he got in church he would start saying hallelujah and thank you Jesus and all the deacons would go to that drunk man and put him out the church and the next Sunday he got drunk I mean spanking drunk he came back into the church and once again he said hallelujah thank you Jesus the deacons once again put him out the church well a couple weeks went by and the man kept on doing the same thing but on this particular day the church messed around and caught on fire the building was burning down to the ground and that old drunk man walked to the church and said hallelujah thank you Jesus the deacons looked at him and said man you got to be crazy. Don't you see our church burning down to the ground? The pastor came and said, Man, how dare you say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. And you see the situation that's at stake right now. The man, he looked at them. He said, The reason I say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus, is because the one time I had finally seen the church catch on fire. And you better thank the Lord that you part of a church that they caught on fire. Because when you're on fire, you got to run and tell somebody how the Lord has made a way for you. How the Lord has picked you up, turned you around, and brought your feet up on solid ground. Can I get about four folks that don't mind saying hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good night, y'all. But I know he's all right. I seen the lightning flash and I God for the messenger. Jesus is in the house right now. If you're here, you're not a member of a Bible-believing church, why don't you stand and make your way toward this altar that symbolizes the presence of the Lord. It's right to be in church. It's wrong to be out of church. And I recommend Jesus to you. If you're here under the sound of my voice, 
why don't, why don't you get your victory today? Why don't you get your miracle today? It's a good day. It's a good day. Thank God for this message. Thank God for this messenger. We're, we're looking for one. Y'all ain't gonna do that. Your name. Don't cheat me. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. It's time to give. Uh, somebody ought to shout praise the Lord. Uh, we know we can't beat God given how. No matter how hard we try. If you're not here this morning, number one, you need to pay your tithes. Amen. And we pray that every member gives something toward this celebration. Amen. Sister Daisy's coming. A young single lady. Amen's coming. Amen. And I think, is it Lois is with her? Amen. We need one of our deacons to stand for our speaker, uh, chairman, amen, Brother McMullen, Deacon McMullen, here to my left, is standing for our speaker. He's raising his hand, amen, amen, amen. Our urchins are going to make ready, amen. Amen, Pastor Griffin, come on, Deacon Thomas. He's asking that his church see Deacon Thomas. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
we ask those in the balcony they're following our ushers amen